I'll flounder around up here for a minute so that we can give uh, anyone else that's coming a chance to get in. Um, my name is Perry Sutherland, and this is my talk. Um, talking about debugging Tomcat and web applications. Um, this is a talk that's geared towards kind of trying to fill the gap between some developer skills and some system administrator skills. So there'll be a little bit of Java specific stuff. I'll talk about some Tomcat um, configuration files and all that kind of stuff too. Um, it's not super exciting, but um, I think it could be beneficial for you guys. I'll probably be sitting for most of this, so if you can't hear me, uh, just like raise your hand or tell me to speak up and I'll louder. Alright, as I said, my name is Cody. Um, I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. I work on the JBoss web server project, which is mostly comprised of Tomcat. Um, I've supported Tomcat, HTTPD, and JBoss VAP for about three years. Um, commercial support at Red Hat. Um, I moved around a little bit in between that time and then after the, the three-year mark, I moved over into engineering. Um, so I'm a software engineer now for the project that I once supported. So I've got a, a good bit of experience and uh, understanding about how customers are using the things. Um, so I've been a Tomcat committer since 2016, ASF member. Um, and I'm also the code maintainer for the Tomcat and Tomcat native um, packages in Fedora. Um, and I've started recently poking around with Docker some too, but not a ton yet. Doing a packaging talk tomorrow, so I can expound on those uh, points if anyone's interested. All right, here's my agenda. Um, talking about some debugging tools, um, do a little bit of general debugging. I'll talk about uh, high CPU and um, heap analysis because those two things in particular are a lot of what I saw coming from customers. Um, not talking specifically about performance, so I'm, I won't cover any profilers, but I'll mention things like uh, debugging with an IDE and JDB. Um, and taking thread docs and comparing those to the CPU data to see what's doing what. Um, then how to get help with debugging Tomcat. Um, basically tell you guys how to engage with the community and then have questions from you. Hopefully I won't go through this too fast and leave a ton of time at the end for questions, but uh, we'll see how we can. <coughs> okay, so helpful tools for debugging. Um, we've got Tomcat log files, which is like an obvious, super simple, basic thing. Um, the IDs, uh, JDB, I'll talk about JMX a little bit, but I honestly don't use JMX a ton for debugging, so I don't have a ton of experience there. I mean, I understand like, how it works and all that stuff, but um, so we'll talk about that. Uh, for capturing thread dumps, I usually use JSTAC just because I like the output a little better than kill minus three. <laughs> um, and then there are some thread dump analyzers, Samurai and TDA are ones that I've used a good bit. Um, but generally, I just use a text editor and plugged in. <clears throat> and then for capturing or analyzing heat dumps, we've got uh, Eclipse Memory Analyzer. And I'll go through um, some use cases for those. So, uh, general debugging. I'm going to sit now. So, if you guys can't hear me, just tell me how to speak up. Oh, please. Um, so, before I get started with uh, debugging, I want to show you my Bash RC. Um, Uh, so I have scripts to start Tomcat, dump Tomcat, uh, start with security, start with debug. Um, Can you increase the font, maybe? Oh, yeah, sorry. Thank you. Is that better? If I do full screen, it like chops off the top, so fine. Um, so yeah, we have a restart. Um, and for debugging, there's a start debug, which uh, drops in a JPDA suspend um, environment variable that causes Tomcat to suspend before it starts doing anything. Um, that's useful if you're debugging like the core of Tomcat. Generally, you're looking at request stuff so you can let Tomcat start up and not worry about that part. Um, and then JDB attach. Um, this just attaches the port 8000, which is what I've configured um, Tomcat to start with. And then it uses the source path so that I could use the list function in JDB to list like blocks of code. Right, so I just wanted to show you guys that before I get started in case I start zipping around and doing things. <laughs> Um, so Tomcat log files are the first place you would go when you see an exception. Um, have, has everybody seen the log files? Do I need to explain like what each of them are? Anybody want me to explain that? Otherwise, I'll skip it. Um, so we can pop over to the logging config. Um, 
a lot of times for a debugging, um, I'll drop in like debug statements and recompile, or sometimes I'll do that. Um, but here you can control the level of uh, your logging. That's like super basic, so if I went through that too fast, just let me know. Here's the fun stuff. <laughs> um, so IDEs, I'm sure everyone here is familiar with, um, but a couple of examples are IntelliJ, um, Eclipse, and VS Code. Um, I usually use IntelliJ for now. Um, I don't use an IDE that much, but the debugging features of IDEs are pretty nice depending on what you're doing. Um, there's a little bit of a pain to configure, but with the Tomcat project, um, we ship configuration files for Eclipse, I think, and um, IntelliJ specifically. Like you can just drop those in um, and they should work. Um, so you run Tomcat in debug mode from your IDE um, and you can just open up the source files and drop a breakpoint wherever you need it to be, and then make the request. It's so it's an end task, actually. But if I remember correctly, it's an end task to do the to get the. Oh yeah, yeah, that's um, all right. The ID support setup. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll show you. Already had it, um, IntelliJ open, <laughs> and I just dropped a breakpoint here and the uh, default servlets um, do get request. And I okay, wasn't running already, but I'll start it up in debug mode. Hopefully, it's already compiled because that was the only thing I should have. Building, compiling, starting. There we go. All right, so we started up, um, and now I'm going to make a request. That app is just an application that I wrote that has a bunch of JSPs that misbehave. Um, so I'm going to make a request to this um, servlet, and as you can see, it's hanging here from curl, and that's because my breakpoint has been hit um, in the IDE. And you can examine um, the thread stack here, which is actually pretty neat because you can click through um, your thread stack and see the objects and their status. Um, you can look at the request and response objects all the way down the chain. Um, keep that in mind because I'll go over it again uh, whenever we talk about uh, heap analysis in a few minutes from that. Um, yeah, so that's not a, a very uh, deep example, but just to give you kind of an idea of what you can do um, <coughs> with an ID debugger. So now I want to get to this. I think I did this Okay, so um, the Java debugger is basically just a CLI version of what we just went through with an IDE. Um, I grabbed the, the struct debug and JDB attached because I'm going to, well, I might run through an example of this unless I've seen screenshots before. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so um, I started up Tomcat with a debug, with debug mode, as I showed in my previous slide, um, and then just attached to it as a running process. Um, here, I added a breakpoint to the same line um, that I did in IntelliJ a second ago. And then um, at this point, in a separate window, I used curl to make a request and cause it to hang in the same place or to stop in the same place. Um, so you can see that it hit the breakpoint here, and it tells you what line the breakpoint was on and shows you the line. And then I executed a list, which shows you uh, four or five lines before and after the breakpoint, so you can kind of see where it is in your code. Um, so again, like this version, you don't have to worry about spinning up an IDE. You can kind of do it quickly on the command line if you know what you're looking for already. Um, it's not very nice though. It doesn't have any tab completion. The, the JDB tool doesn't. Um, so you have to like, I can paste stuff in. Um, I don't even think you can use the arrow keys to go left and right and get the back space. So it's, very limited use case. Okay. That was all way too fast. <laughs> so um, Java management extensions, or JMX, is a very powerful way to see everything about Tomcat Studio in real time. Um, you can access it locally by attaching to the process, or you can configure um, a JMX uh, port that you can access remotely. Um, Tomcat also has a JMX proxy servlet, which is uh, configured by default through the manager application. So you can make uh, HTTP requests to Tomcat with um, 
the end beans that you're looking for and operations if you want to execute an operation and get that return through HCP. Um, and Uh, so I use JConsole generally. Um, you can use JVisual VM or other like, proof value type tools um, to attach to a process, but this is basically what it looks like. And um, JConsole shows you in this really like 90s uh, GUI like, what's going on in your uh, JVM. You can see your memory, uh, you can perform GCs. Um, I'm fairly certain you can also take a heat dump from here. Um, just recall how. Um, you can look at the thread states for all the threads in the JVM. Um, you have, see what the number of classes overloaded, general game summary, and then your NBs um, if you're looking for a specific NBM operation to execute. I can't think of any off the top of my head to play with. Yep. So assuming Tomcat is frozen, uh, will this be a good way to find out? Uh, if Tomcat is frozen or hung, um, Depends how it is frozen. <laughs> yeah, if, if it's like an application thread, then maybe. But if so, uh, typically I have to kill it. And so, my solution. so you might not have to kill it if if it's frozen in a way that just the threads are waiting on something. You can figure it out. Mm -hmm. But at some point, it might be under cer certain circumstances, it might be unresponsive in a way that you can figure it out. The JVM is only. Yeah. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a second when we go through one of the CPU examples. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. Um, there's also some helpful frameworks for collecting data through JMX. Um, Jalokia and Prometheus are ones that I mentioned because um, they were added to, well, they're commented out, but they're in our uh, Docker file that Remy submitted um, or committed to the code base that uses the Tomcat Maven, like the embedded Tomcat, to create a fat jar um, that will run inside of a container. So that's not so much for debugging necessarily, but monitoring and potentially spotting problems like later on. Right, debugging CPU issues. Um, like I said before, this was a common thing uh, whenever I worked in uh, Red Hat support. Um, customers would come in and say like, oh, my Tomcat's consuming all my CPU, what's it doing? Nine times out of 10 is the application, not Tomcat specifically. So um, generally application library, or application or library code that's doing it. Um, excessive GC, usually due to an undersized heap, um, or concurrent access to non-thread safe objects. That one was surprisingly common. Uh, so I uh, talked about that app that I wrote, that app, a second ago. Um, and the JSP, or I have several JSPs, but one of them loops for one minute um, and just sits and turns the CPU. Um, I don't remember if I was going to mention this somewhere later, but um, the access log valve, which is enabled by default for Tomcat, um, you can use it and add a percent D or percent T to your pattern, and that'll add a time taken to your access log requests. Um, so if your customers are complaining about like hanging requests or long running requests, you can enable the time taken uh, in your pattern and then you'll be able to see like exactly which request is causing problems. You'll be able to dig into it that way. Um, you could even log like headers and uh, query string and that sort of jazz in there too if you wanted. Is, um, it, yeah. is it possible, I don't know, is it possible to log at the beginning of the request rather than the end? Um, I don't think so. I think the access log valve does everything at the end of the request. So, but then if there's a problem and the request never ends, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but you'll still be able to um, to figure out what it's doing as I progress this example. We'll see. Um, so I started. I used curl to initiate a request through the loop for one minute JSP, um, and then I used this high CPU JSTAC script. Um, I used JPS to grab the PID here. So. It's um, but this loops uh, six times with 20 seconds in between and just takes a thread dump and captures CPU data using top um, each time. Uh, this is what the script looks like. It's not super complicated. You can see the loop in the interval listed up here. Um, here's the top command. Uh, dash capital H grabs the uh, thread information so it doesn't just have the one process. Um, and then use JSTAC to take a thread dump. 
Uh, so after we run this uh, JSTAC uh, command, or the PyCP JSTAC script, um, then we can take a look at the output that it was that created. Um, I did a grip here for PID, because that's the header line for each one, and then grabbed the top three um, CPU consumers. Um, so when I worked in support, uh, the version of top never listed the thread name. Um, so I think on rel it still doesn't list the thread name, it just says Java as a command name here. Um, but on my Fedora 30 machine, whenever I ran this, it actually listed the thread name, which is quite useful. Um, but here, so we see that over these, um, these four iterations, this HCP NIO 8080 exec one is um, thread is using like 99.9% .9 of the CPU. Um, so you may be wondering why that is. So um, you can grab the uh, PID, it'll be a decimal value. Um, I did some more fancy CLS up here to convert that to a hex um, and grab that and the 10 subsequent lines uh, from the thread dump. So you can see here that the thread is currently uh, running and it's sitting on index.jsp because I took the screenshot before I renamed the application. <laughs> so that should say loop for one minute.jsp. Um, but you can see exactly which line is stuck on, 118. And then um, for the purposes of grabbing a screenshot, I used awk to grab like a block from that um, now named loop for one minute JSP. Uh, this is the compiled, like the, the servlet version of the JSP. Uh, so I grab it from the work directory. And you can see the line 118 is a while loop that just sits and spins for one minute. So nothing special. That's a very simplified version of uh, what you could do with this method of debugging. Um, but for the purposes of the presentation, I thought it's pretty simple and straightforward to understand. Um, and also, bonus. Uh, sometimes, as I mentioned before, um, GC threads and um, GC churn is the cause of your CPU issues. Um, so following the same method and grabbing the same um, output, you can see here that um, GC usage um, is only around 20%, so nothing special, but that's because my application wasn't really like turning too hard. Um, but you can see in my current version of top output, that is the G1 refine and GC threads. Um, in the rel or Ubuntu, I think, versions of the top output, it doesn't tell you the thread name, it just says Java. Um, so you can grab the PID and convert it to a hexadecimal value and then grip it from the thread dump and see that it's the GC threads that are causing your turn. Um, also, G you might notice that GC threads don't have a thread stack. None of the like JVM threads do. All right, quick look with Samurai and TDA. Um, so these are two thread dump analysis tools. So these can be useful. Um, PDA is not super exciting. It always starts in this weird Okay. Um, but so it just gives you like a visual representation of the threads so it's not looking at a straight uh, text file which can be kind of hard to read um, so you can kind of breeze through here and see um, each one of these dumps so there's only four thread dumps that were captured in this file um, so you can see the threads here you can see it lists like our categorizes threads waiting for monitors start sleeping for mo sleeping on monitors locking um, you can see the monitors themselves, clock threads, so on and so forth. So not super exciting, but if you wanted to um, quickly and easily like look at a specific thread, then this might be easier for you to do um, if you're a Ruby person than looking at the, uh, the thread dump output itself. Or if you want to, for some reason, you can look at the like, entire log file just All right, so Samurai actually has a different visualization. Um, this is quite useful for looking at, um, like looking at thread states over time. Um, in my example, I don't 
all the threads were doing the same thing, so you just have this little arrow that said I'm doing the same thing as the previous dump. Um, but sometimes when that um, state changes or when you have blocking, you have different colorized blocks here. Um, or if you have a deadlock, like it's, it's very obvious to open this up and you'll see a little skull and the perfect place. Um, something else that's kind of neat is the, the um, you can look at the sequence here. So when I click on this one thread, it shows me the thread dump, or it shows me the thread in each one of the dumps. So you have the first dump at the top, and then the second, and so on, down to the bottom. So that's a little different than um, looking at it visually, just in a blob. This also has a log file too, you can click over if you want to look at it. Do I have any questions about Samurai or TPA? Or just not very flashy. How was it that you connected to the log? Or is it you just read the log? Uh, yeah, I just opened the log file. So um, here, So here I have uh, the CPU output captured and then the thread down next to it. So I just opened it up and grabbed the log file. And so would that be an example like grabbing Catalina dot out and that's pretty much what you're looking at? Yeah, so if you have, uh, if you use kill minus three instead of JSTAC to dump thread stacks into your Catalina output, then yeah, you could open Catalina out with TDA or Samurai and it would like parse out the logs. Okay, and if you use JSTAC, you're just appending to the same file over and over again? Yeah. Like right. every 20 seconds or whatever mm -hmm. you said? Yeah, so the first time it creates a new file and then the subsequent like iterations just in. So yeah, if you look at the um, So yeah, you can see like each one of the iterations is just appended to the file and then the thread depth analyzer um, they were smart enough to like force them out. Alright, anybody have any questions about uh, CPU issues or threat analysis. I'm not going very deep here, so he has that question. I have a, I have a question that's not uh, it's more uh, related to what you showed earlier. Uh, JSP debugging, line debugging in JSP. Mm -hmm. Do you do that too? Can you do it with, uh, with IntelliJ again? Do you, do you do that? That's a good question. And if you have it for later, then I can wait. Yeah, I don't know. I've never tried to debug a JSP directly. Much more <laughs> but yeah, that would be a uh, good I know it's possible. You can yeah. do it with NetBeans. <laughs> yeah, if you can do it with NetBeans, I assume you can do it with them. Uh, there, there is actually a specification for JSR45, and I know it's not that implemented. Hmm. But I've never set it up again. Oh man. So I'm using the free the community edition of IntelliJ and apparently it doesn't support JSP files. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't be able to uh, try that for you here live today. <laughs> Just so you know that uh, you're uh, uh, you're entitled to uh, Oh yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah, I just uh, haven't have a go. I don't use the IDE that much. I don't either. I mean I use the community edition, but it's good. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to move on to um, debugging memory issues. Ugh, way too fast. Um, so one of the main problems when it comes to Java, Java memory problem or issues is uh, out-of-memory errors. There are several different types of out-of-memory errors. Today I'm going to talk about heap space spoons because honestly they're just like the most common and sort of the easiest ones to diagnose. Um, <laughs> But there's also perm gen or metaspace uh, if you're using Java 8 and later. Um, unable to create a new native thread, which isn't really a memory problem. It's about your um, thread limitations on your OS. Uh, GC overhead limit exceeded, uh, out of swap space or native memory exhausted. Those are kind of self explanatory. Um, yeah, so now we'll take a look at uh, analyzing a heap, a heap dump that was generated by a uh, heap space. So in order to capture a heap dump, you have to add a JVM argument. It's um, plus heap dump on out of memory error, uh, and then restart Tomcat. And then the next time uh, Tomcat encounters an out of memory error, it'll create a heap dump for you. You can specify the um, file location and file name and all that stuff in uh, subsequent JVM arguments too. 
All right, so my bad app can also create out memory error. Uh, so boom.jsp adds one billion uh, integers to an array list. <laughs> <laughs> so when I did this the first time, I did not limit my uh, heap space. So I got 25% of 16 gigs, <laughs> which was quite a huge heap up. Uh, so I re uh, recreated this or re-executed with a 500 megabyte heap so that I could actually like, analyze it now and not wait until it took forever to parse. Um, so to analyze the heap dump, you just open your heap dump file with mat. Um, like I said, this the heap size for this example is 500 megabytes, um, but the heap dump ends up being around 800 megs. So you have to make sure that you have at least, I think, two gigs of memory to parse this thing or you don't even Oh, this is range chats. Um, So I've already parsed this. Um, oh. oh yeah, I forgot. Um, so when you open this, it gives you a, a wizard to get started. Um, Link suspects report is really good to run um, whenever you do your analysis uh, because Matt will try and figure out like what it thinks of the leak um, and point you to that those objects like immediately. Yeah, there we go. Um, so as we talked about in the in the previous slide, um, this JSP just added a whole bunch of integers to an array list. <laughs> so it's very obvious what the problem was here. Um, it won't always be that obvious, and also um, you may just have an undersized heap, so there may not even be a problem other than your heap is too small. <coughs> so it's not always as straightforward as this example you can see. Um, but so the problem suspect here that it tells you is the task thread, um, it gives you the thread name here, it tells you that it has uh, 415 million or 98% of the heap space objects in an object array. Um, you can click details down here and it'll give you even more information about it. Um, you can see that it's actually an array list. Um, you can see the contents of the array list here. There's an object array with I think, 20 million integers in it before it died. <laughs> um, let's see if there's some more information here. Um, you have the thread stack that encountered the OOM. Um, Again, this in this case, yeah, sure, um, I was adding a whole bunch of stuff to this one huge array list, but um, that won't always be the case. Sometimes your application that hit, the, the thread that hit the out of memory error has nothing to do with what the reason is for the out of memory error. Next time I give this talk, I think I'll give a more interesting uh, <laughs> heap analysis scenario. Um, so outside of your leak suspects, you can always also look at the um, or a histogram, which shows you number of objects and also your retained heap size here. Um, it lists in the um, order of your heap size or space consumed. So you can see that there's 20 million 767,897 integers <laughs> that are in your um, in this particular heap dump. That's not super exciting. Um, then if you look at the dominator tree, which shows you the largest objects, you'll see that the task thread here um, is the largest object that you have in the heap, and your object array that contains these 20 million integers is here. Something interesting um, that I suggested you hold on to from the uh, IDE demo was a thread stack. Um, so you can use uh, Matt to also analyze a thread overview. So from here we can see the offending thread is just exec thread. Um, and then you can kind of click back through and look at objects that are inside in each one of these frames. <coughs> so you can see the array list that's on the servlet and the element data, which I probably shouldn't have clicked. <laughs> well, no. Is that a question? Mm, maybe. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's just turning. Whoops. Um, I thought it limits to like 100 projects at a time. Well, apparently I'm like right at the top of the heat size for Mac, so <laughs> it's probably doing some GC. So you can see down in the bottom corner over here, um, I think I, I gave it like four gigs of uh, heat space, and it's like right at the top. So when I click it, I'm going to send it over the edge. You just said it's probably doing some GC. What's GC? Oh, GC, garbage collection. Oh, garbage collection. Yeah. So you might want to just kill that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can I can analyze the heat dump that I would have generated had I turned on heat dump collection. Um, but so yeah, this is um, just kind of going through what I just said. Um, like I said, I took a bunch of screenshots just in case my demo didn't work, but it worked out. Oh yeah. Um, Another thing that you can do looking at a heat dump um, through the thread review is you can actually um, you can trace back to the request that uh, um, initiated the object creation. Um, so if you look down the stack to the ACP servlet service, um, you can actually find the um, the Coyote request and see its buffer contents. So it was this. Um, Thread stack was caused by a get request to uh, bad app slash .jsp um, and lots of other information. You can see the connector it came in on and all sorts of other things. Here. I want to repeat that again. Like you can literally find the exact request and all of its attributes. Yes, <laughs> found the request, all of its attributes, um, the connector it came in on, better source IP. Yeah, <laughs> there anything you want to see. Um, Where did you see this? This is the. So this is looking, so the, the thread stack that I clicked on and crashed Matt with a second ago, um, you can actually dig back through that um, down to the HTTP servlet service, and you can find the Coyote request that initiated the thread stack, um, and you can see what the request is that calls the, the thread stack. Very cool. I remember trying to find it and I didn't see the information there. Yeah, it's pretty pretty deep down in here. I mean, you can see I clicked on the request facade, and then the connector request, then the Coyote request, then the input buffer, then the request again, and then the URI uh, MD, which is the message that's. So if you can push it to the server, you can see what the request is. Yep. <laughs> yeah, even if, uh, like you said earlier, um, the access log only um, prints out at the end of the request. So if they initiated this, it was sitting there turning, it crashed, right. obviously you wouldn't write it out. But you can still find the request that initiated the problem by digging through the Um, so I hope, hope uh, as I'm sad, I hope that everybody understands that uh, providing a heat dump to people gives them Everything. a snapshot of your JVM memory. Um, so yeah, only provide heat dumps to trusted sources. Don't like go and upload it to a random place and ask the Tomcat community to help you debug it because you may have social security numbers in there, you may have credit card numbers in there, you may have personal awesome. identifiable data. So yeah, passport data. <laughs> I've seen all sorts of stuff in, uh, in heat analysis over the years of doing commercial support. All right. Uh, yeah, so as I stated before, um, things aren't always this easy. This is a, this is a very simplified version of these uh, scenarios that we walk through. So just understand that um, just because a particular request ended up causing a noon like this, um, it may not have been the cause, the actual cause of um, so I'm almost at the end here. Uh, so does anybody have any questions before I tell you how to get help? Or you read? <laughs> Okay, so if you need help with uh, debugging Tomcat, you can always ask the community. Um, you would do that through the Tomcat users list, um, which when you get the slides, there's all these yellow things are uh, similar or uh, hyperlinked, so you can click on them. Um, so you could either reach out via email to the Tomcat users list, or um, I usually hang out on Freenode and found Tomcat. It's pretty low volume though. I probably get like maybe one question every few days. Maybe less than that lately. Um, 
but whenever you get ready to ask a question, prepare to um, provide your Java version, Tomcat version, OS details, um, and then any information about the uh, potential cause of the event. So these questions here are specific to like CPU issues. So does a particular event or resource uh, trigger the problem? How long does the problem last? Um, did it start recently? A lot of times people like get system updates and don't know that they got a system update and that might be causing the problem. So those are very important questions to answer. I would just add that the latest is not a valid version of it. What? <laughs> latest oh yeah, right. Latest? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, provide your actual like full version of permission. Not just 8.5 or latest. Oh yeah, the most latest one. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, there are no questions. That's the last slide. Okay. <laughs> um, we can poke around and map some more. So ignore this box. This is like a, a bug <coughs> with uh, the clips mapped. Can you go dig down that request that caused the thing and? Uh, Show the uh, show everything. So you're looking specifically for the connector, or what? What you're looking at? Uh, just to open in a live view the request. No, no, no I'm asking Koti what is it? How is he finding that information? What is it? Ah, what yeah, is yeah. How are you selecting? <laughs> what you oh, yeah. There? So, um, I mean, I just know that the. ATB service has a reference to the request. Um, I guess the JSP base might also, but I just kind of pick like the topmost thread object, um, and then go picking through these requests, request objects. So all the blue icons that are shown there, those are those are entries in the stack trace, correct? Mm -hmm. And then yep, once you choose point. one, then you're seeing the locals at that stack yes. uh, at that point frame. You see a trace of the thing. Yep. Um, and there might, there's, I mean, I'm sure there's a different way, there's a whole bunch of different ways to find uh, different requests, but yeah, you just kind of click down, click around, see what you're, see what might be interesting, but this is how I found the specific request object, um, you can see in the byte buffer or byte chunk that this is the object. So there's also, you can see the connector object that it came in on and all of its like local Variables. Um, you can look at information about the session. You can grab the session ID if you want to. So the class is current the request? Because I think you can filter the class also. Oh, yeah. So you can search um, using um, OQL, uh, but I haven't done that in a while, so I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like. Yeah, it has a wildcard option where you can just put the partial name of the asterisk. So there's only one request in this heap. <laughs> so pretty easy to find using OQL. Yeah, the query language in here is actually quite powerful. Um, and that is how I would, um, after I like poked around and found what I was looking for, I would actually write an OQL query to drop in the customer case and say, this is exactly where I found your problem and then give them the output from that so that I had a reference for myself later um, instead of like writing down and put on this. And this. <laughs> But yeah, there's there's a ton of stuff about the request here that you can look at. I mean, like Chris said earlier, I don't, I don't have any headers in this request. So well, nothing fun. Yeah, nothing exciting. But the headers and the requests, you the request line are really the things you're looking for primarily. <coughs> Yeah, so I mean, you could you could <coughs> explore this for quite a while, um, especially if you have a, a limited knowledge of um, how Tomcat four works. Um, you could kind of click around and, and learn how these things are related. Um, for the real time. All right.
there aren't any other questions, um, I'm happy to stand around and talk or keep poking around in that. But so in Reno, you're actually there in Monitor? Because I never... Yeah, there's at least uh, one other, or two other, Jason B sometimes in there. Um, and I forgot the other guy's name who is like sitting around. He, he answers more questions than I do nowadays. But we get a lot of people that come in, like they join the HCPD channel and try and like ask them about how to proxy the Tomcat and they always like <laughs> kick them over to us. There's also a Tomcat Slack channel, mm -hmm. which I was on for one day exactly. Yeah, I think that's what <laughs> really And I don't really that very much. I was doing it whenever I used Slack for work, but now I don't. So. Okay. Yeah, the best place to go for help is the users list. And the best feature of the users list is the archive. <laughs> right. And Christopher too. <laughs> Ask him. Oh, no, from experience. <laughs> okay. Well, I think I'm done. Um, I'll be here for another.